Off we go. Mostly finished truck. Assorted pile of things. We have two wheel sets. I have truck frame. We have equalizer bars. We have another equalizer bar. Journal boxes. Strapping. And an awful lot of parts. Pile of parts there. Okay, the first step that we need to do is we need to clean up all of the journal bearing surfaces. Should we have a little look at the journals down here? This is the bearing surfaces and right the end of the axle there. We have to clean those up. And once those are all set and clear, then we will put the journal boxes on it. After that, we will clean up these surfaces. Now, all of these uh, bearings have been uh, all of these bearings have been scraped on the undersides to match the contour of the axle underneath it. So when we start uh, moving these around, we definitely need to mark them so that we know which ones go where. Okay, now we have the markers on there. And that one. And then over on this one here. Four on there. There we go. Also, going to make a note here that uh, our bearings go. Uh, the number three goes under the two L. Four goes on the one L. Two goes on to eleven R. One goes under the two R. And, uh, it seems somewhat arbitrary, and it is because the, uh, the bearings are mated to a particular surface, not where it is in its position in the truck. These things have all gone around quite a bit, so uh, uh, these are simply markings to know uh, general directions and things like that. Now, this is our somewhat crude way of keeping track of bearing sizes and whatnot. This is the real listing of all the different sizes and whatnot. When, uh, when Dean Look had to scrape all of those bearings to fit, this is the guy that he was going from. So, he, I'm imagining that uh, he spent quite a lovely couple of days working outside in the sunshine scraping these bearings out, because that's, that's where the axles were up until uh, about a month ago, uh, the nice warm. And, uh, today it's about 22 degrees outside and maybe a smidge warmer inside. So be thinking about Dean and his cap scratching little bits off of these bearings while we're putting these together. All right, now we're looking at the axle surface here. A little closer. Um, what you're seeing here is that uh, the layer of protective grease that we've smeared on this over the course of, I don't know, it's been a couple of years ago now, it's been doing its job keeping the, the bearing surface and the axle surface uh, from uh, getting contaminated or rusting. All of that stuff now has to come off. Okay, this is a cleaned axle surface. All the way around that, that wherever the journal bearing is going to be sitting, we want to make sure that that's nice and clean. Uh, over here, we have the cleaned journal bearing itself. Take a look in there and see that the, uh, all of the grease has been removed from there, and you can kind of make out that there's some striations. And those are leftover marks from the scraping process. The scraping process takes uh, quite a substantial amount of time to get the, uh, the bearing to fit exactly correctly up against the, uh, the axle surface. We're shooting when we do that uh, for mm -hmm. over 50% of this bearing touching the axle. We, uh, we go through process using a tube of something called Prussian blue, which is a kind of a blue ink. And we smear that on the inside of the face and we see uh, how much touches the axle surface. It's, uh, like I said, very, very long and complicated, uh, drawn out kind of a process, but uh, that would enable um, 
instead of having something that rolls kind of okay, it uh, rolls much, much smoother. And it also means that the break-in time on these bearings will be much reduced as well with far less heat and, uh, and damage to the bearing. So, so uh, certainly it's a step worthwhile. Okay, the same thing done with uh, journal surfaces number two. And number three. And this is number four. Looking good. Looking good. Ready for the next phase. Right, before we go any farther, we're going to have to uh, pre-treat one of the more interesting parts of our whole truck assembly. This is a pad that goes inside of the journal box. What this does is it contains a sponge in here and it uh, makes sure that oil gets put underneath the bearing surface and applies constant oil to all of those surfaces. Uh, kind of a self-oiler concept, only it's uh, very, very old. This particular um, pad that we're looking at is, is new technology. It used to be that this was all done with um, with a yarn made out of wool. This actually is a kind of a Turkish cotton and inside is, is a little polyurethane or polystyrene type uh, sponge and what that does is it soaks up the oil and it pushes oil up through those fibers and oils everything. So we have to actually now uh, get four of these and cover them in oil and let them soak that up so that uh, when it comes time we can put that right inside of the journal boxes and uh, that will provide our lubrication. Alright, there's there are our four sponges right in there. Um, I'm going to go out to the oil container. We're going to go get some 320 weight Morlina oil. And, uh, cover that all up see how much that soaks in. Alright, we're out in the storage container getting some oil. And, uh, this, this is kind of a fun shot here. This is a 320 weight oil at about 20 degrees and uh, it's about the consistency of molasses. Maybe a little tougher than that. Something to think about, you know, when you start putting power to some of these trolleys. Really you're moving all those tons of momentum there uh, against molasses. Good stuff. Okay, same shot takes you. Um, this is about a gallon and a half of oil in, in these sponges. Um, as this warms up, we'll see whether or not that soaks in much. Um, hopefully, what happens is that it soaks the whole thing in, and then uh, we end up with sponges that contain quite a substantial amount of oil. We'll tuck those right into the journal boxes, and they will do wonderful things for our lubrication. All right, now we're looking at a journal box. Uh, this is the next step. The journal box uh, fits over those axle ends. And on top of it here, we have a nice, wonderful sponge. This is a representation of what's going to happen here. We have the sponge. The sponge goes right inside there. And then, see how that sponge has a lot of lift there. What that does is it rubs underneath the underside of the axle, and that lets oil go around. So that's that's the next thing that gets put on here. And what we'll do is uh, put this box over the axles and then this goes in afterwards. Also which goes in, this goes on top. So what we'll have is that that piece goes right on top there. And then should be all set. The last thing that we have to make a note of here is that we have these wonderful dust caps, they're called, and they slide right in the back side here. And what that does is it prevents dust from getting into the back side of this, which actually is quite a sizable hole in the back. Let's just turn this around real quick here. Let's take a look at it. This has a very sizable hole that we need here. And that dust cap in place decreases the size of the hole, also allows us to go up and down the movement of the car. So, 
flexible. Um, we're actually using something that we actually have way back in the early 1900s. This is plywood. I have to make a note of, of the fact that we are using something that's not quite a traditional item for this age of a car, but we're, uh, sometimes you need to kind of roll with the times. And the plywood of this particular type, this is, uh, looks like a marine grade, which came into existence in the late 30s. So they probably use these later on in life on newer cars, but not on this particular one. Um, so this, this is a little non-standard, maybe a deluxe version we'll call this. All right, here's the first journal box on the first axle. Kind of see down in here a little bit. You see there's the end of the axle there, just above it. It's the, uh, the bearing, and then right above that is the keeper. It's very dark in there. Mm. Scary. So the, uh, after this, we'll put one of those oil-soaked pads down at the bottom. Here it is. Phase. Make sure that we can actually get clearance. We have as much clearance on this side. The whole assembly needs to go over. over. Yeah. Just a smidge. Do here. Have a handy dandy patented wheel car. The acid brush. way a little bit. Yep. Once you get it all put together, you should be able to grab a hold of the truck. Um, and go back. Move it. Now that's a real trick. Put one of these things in the right. And then remove after everything is all set in this truck. It's quite nice. This is the, what's called the commutator cover for the GE80 Form A motors, 
which uh, ASL 100 is equipped with. These, as far as we know, are the original. And you notice the last patent date is 1904. And of course, this locomotive was built in 1906, so it was very likely that these are the motors that the car came equipped with. Um, form A means the basic form, and then they had various variations that came along over the years. But this is the most common one, and we have quite a few of this type of motor running on our property. So we're going to put this on the motor now. You'll see it in context. Okay, we'll take the commutator cover off to unveil the newly turned and undercut commutator. This, these are carbon brushes, which are also new, and brush holders. The wire, one of the wires that goes to the power comes in, goes into here. Power goes through here, through all the windings in the armature, which is way inside of here. You can't see it, but you've probably seen it in earlier versions. And back out through this brush holder to another wire out here, which is then connected to the fields which are four poles that run around the inside, and then uh, come back out of the field and goes back to ground. So this is a series motor. Uh, everything is in series with, with itself, 600 volt motor. We're going to test this motor in a few minutes on a welder, and you'll see what it, how it works. Looking in here is what they called, in the original catalog I was looking at yesterday, a grease box. And we've got it opened up because uh, we're going to pack this with wool waste which will be saturated in oil and will lubricate this. And when that's done after the car is in service, then you can stick a dipstick down here much as you would in an automobile engine and check the level of the oil. So this is going to be stuffed full of waste pretty soon. Right now we're working on the covers for this which have a felt lining that seals them and a spring which pushes them down. We took them off yesterday so that we could uh, reline them, the felt having all disappeared. The motor has two ends. This is called the commutator end, obviously, and the other end is called the pinion end. And this is a pinion which is pressed on. What we're going to do is take this back off because we think it's just stuck on here. We'll heat it up to expand it slightly and then push it on and it'll cool off and will shrink on. Then there'll be a nut and a retainer that go on this end. We have to make the, the retainer. And then uh, this will also get packed with oil just like that and then all these bolts will fasten, we use to fasten the motor together. So I guess that's it. We brought in, the car has four motors. These have been returned from AC Electric Company where they were overhauled. This is the commutator cover latches and these are, we've got a number of this type of motors, but this is the only one with the working set. We were able to heat them up and loosen them up and they work quite nicely. So here we are getting access to the commutator. Now, if you look inside, you will see welding power applied to this. Spinning on welding current, which we, uh, it's about 30 volts, so it's running at a low speed. This is a series motor which has no top speed, so if we were to run this on full power, within seconds it would blow up and explode. So we can get away with it now, but without a load, without being directly connected. That noise you hear is the brushes on the commutator and that's the noise it should make and it's very nice spinning very nicely this note motor was outside overnight it's quite cold uh, so normally it would be pretty stiff but it seems to run very very nicely which is just what we want <laughs> 